You sit down to write your PhD thesis, determined that today's the day you'll make real progress. And you get stuck. There's so much information, so many ideas, and the crushing pressure to fit it all together and to sound academic at the same time. But writing your thesis does not have to be this complicated. And in this video, I'll show you four simple principles that can make your writing clearer, stronger, and a whole lot easier. So if we haven't met before, my name's James Hayton. I'm a former physicist, and over the last 15 years, I've coached thousands of PhD students from all over the world and every academic field. And these four principles I'm about to share have helped them to write with more clarity, confidence, and purpose. So principle number one is to make your writing as easy as possible to understand. There is a common assumption that academic writing needs to be complicated, that you need to use the most sophisticated language and that you need to impress the reader with your mastery of sentence craft, while also weaving together multiple concepts at the same time. But the fundamental goal is to communicate your research and your ideas. So you want to make it as easy as possible for the reader to understand without obviously dumbing down. Think about it this way. Your examiner is a busy academic with a lot of other demands on their time and attention. So if they have to do extra work to try and figure out what you're trying to say, it's more likely to frustrate them than impress them. Principle number two, know what you want to say. So if you want to communicate effectively, you need to be clear in your own mind about what you want to say. And this is where a lot of students get stuck. So they end up putting everything they can think of on the page in the hope that a clear message will somehow emerge. But clarity does not happen by accident, and it's better to approach it in a more systematic way. So the way I think about it is to try to build the thesis around the answers to three central questions. First, what are you trying to find out? Second, how did you conduct the research? And third, what have you discovered that we didn't know before? Everything else that you include is there to provide context or supporting detail or explanation around these three points. And if the answers to any of these questions are unclear, then all the other content about background or literature or theory becomes irrelevant. In other words, we want to make your research, your ideas and your contribution the star of the show. And we need clarity around these before anything else. Principle number three, have the confidence to leave things out. So obviously, even though we're focusing on these three points, we still need to include background information as well as relevant literature and theory. And the temptation when you do this might be to try and fit in as much as possible under the assumption that more is better. But beyond a certain point, the more we add, the more we dilute the most important information and the more difficult it will be for the reader to make sense of. And if you add content that you don't really understand, then all it will do is attract more difficult questions in the defense. So when I was writing my own thesis, I decided that A, I would focus on my strengths and bring the examiner onto the ground that I was most comfortable defending instead of worrying about what they might want to see. And B, I would only cite the very best and most relevant sources. And any literature I cited had to be good enough to get into my thesis. And this meant that I cited only a fraction of the total papers that I'd looked at throughout my whole PhD, but the examiner's comment was that my bibliography was of very high quality, which I think shows greater skill and expertise than trying to include everything. And this exclusive approach also gave me a feeling of control instead of feeling like I somehow had to find a place for everything and it made the writing process easier too. So in terms of background information, we want to focus on the essential facts or concepts that are necessary to understand your project. And in terms of the literature, we want to cut through all the noise and focus on the few that have had a major influence on the field or your particular research area, that have directly influenced your research in some way, 
or that are in some other way highly relevant to your project and leave everything else out. And if you want to make decisions about what's relevant and what's not, principle number four is that each section or subsection should have a singular focus. So as I mentioned earlier, there is a common assumption that every section should weave together and repeat concepts from every other section. But this means that the central point of the section can get lost in the noise. It also means that you end up writing the same things over and over and over again. Now, some will say that you need this repetition because the reader will skim the document. So every section has to contain all of the major ideas. But the reason the reader will skim is they'll be looking for relevant information among all the endless repetition. So a far better approach is to make sure that each section or subsection has a clear singular focus and make it easy for the reader to find what they're looking for. This way, you can make sure you firmly establish whatever key points you want to communicate. And if you think of any extra important information or supporting detail or nuance related to those points, you know where to put it. And from the reader's perspective, if you have a table of contents with section headings that make sense, they will be able to find whatever they're looking for very, very easily. Now, it's one thing to understand these four principles, but of course, applying them when you're under pressure, when you're short on time and you're stuck in your own head, is something else entirely. And this is where structured guidance can make a real difference. So whether you're looking for a step-by-step -step process or personalized feedback, my course and my one-to-one -one coaching programs are designed to help you write with more clarity, focus, and confidence. And for more details on these and how I can help, just click on the links below. So that's all from me. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time.